Come on, let's stand to our feet. We are One, here to worship two, the three, King of Kings. Four. Diligently soak it with the word of God. Now the time we have waiting for has finally come. With us today is a father and a general in God's army. Hey! Anyone that does not know Bishop JB is an unbelieving, believing, believing unbeliever. There are some of us in the land that at least if you know how to say praise the Lord, you must know the name of that fellow. And it's a privilege when fathers bless children. Yes. When husbands bless wife, isn't it? Yes. Because it is an authority. It is scriptural. It is biblical. When a father blesses the family, every cause is reversed. Yes. When a husband tells the wife, you will make it. Even if the wife is mumu, you will make it. Yes. And the devil knows this. That's why the husband, some of them are drunkards. So that they don't pray for the wife. So it's the wife praying for the husband. Imagine what happens, what will happen if every morning your husband says to you, you are blessed as you go out. You are blessed as you come in. Your husband. How many of you want that kind of a husband? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't need to tell you who you, Bishop JB is. Welcome Bishop JB. To the glory, the glory, the glory of the Lord is coming now. Somebody have a say. Glory, the glory, glory, the glory, glory of the Lord is coming down. I say the glory, the glory. Are you singing? The glory. The glory of the Lord is coming down. Oh, well, that's what you are singing. What's this? Isabida, Isabida. What language is that? This we're going to what to attend next. So sometimes you sing something, we hear another thing. So. It's, Hearing is Sabida, money is Sabida. Okay, is that uh, Ibo, Yoruba, Kikuyu? 
Kikamba, so the glory of the Lord is coming down. All right, all right, all right. It's coming down. It's coming down. That's right. Good afternoon. How are you? You are doing well? Well, before I bring the word, can we celebrate Pastor Esther? are a part mm-hmm. of what uh, Reverend Esther Obasik is doing, you must honor the anointing upon her life. Yeah. Because the anointing you don't respect will never profit you. So if you don't honor this anointing, then you look for another ministry. But if you're going to be part of this, then you've got to honor the anointing yeah. upon her life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We have known the Obasi case, first of all, by seeing them, and then one time I was had the privilege of visiting their church when they were conducting a wedding, and we got close. My connection to Nigeria goes many years back. I lived in Lagos for a year and survived. <laughs> that is in, I lived in a place called Oshodi. Oshodi, yes, in uh, Lagos. 1982, it was a very tough neighborhood, and I survived. And I came back to tell the story. And um, when we met recently, she asked me, When will you come and speak to the ladies in Queen Esther? Uh, it was in a bank ho- banking hall, and we go to talking like servants of God. We exchanged dates. I told her, Okay, this date, I'm, I think I'll be in Kenya. Or Nairobi. Sometimes I'm in Kenya, not in Nairobi. I'll be in Nairobi. And uh, this is the day that I'm here. Yeah. I'd like to sincerely apologize. My wife couldn't be able to come because he's normally uh, respectful when you're going to a ladies' meeting to go with your wife. Uh, but I'm sorry she couldn't come. She had gone for ministry in her own right, ministering to pastor's wives in a place called Kamu, just near Mtito and Day, and she was driving back today from, she's been there from Thursday uh, for two days, ministering with the pastor's wives. She's a mother in our house, so many pastor's wives call her just to spend time for ministry and impartation. So I'm sure she's, she may be somewhere near Nairobi by now, maybe at home. Life is like that when you reach our age, but we give God the glory. <laughs> It's the name of the Lord. So, but she sends her love. She knows I'm here. We talked this morning. She says, can you pass my love to Pastor Esther and the ladies? So do you receive the greetings? It's easy to know her. When you meet my wife, you'll know her easily. We look alike. She looks like me. I look like her. When you have lived together for 38 years, you begin to rub off to one, off onto one another, and uh, you start looking like one another. So if you meet her, you'll know, oh, she's the one, she looks like JB, and so forth. So thank you very much. Now look at your neighbor, and just tell him, look at, if, just find out whether you like the neighbor you're standing next to, first of all. Do you like the neighbor you're standing next to? All right, all right. I'll give, listen, listen, I'm giving you a choice. If you are sitting among a bunch of Philistines, I am allowing you to move now so that you can sit among some Hebrew children who know how to praise God. Do you like the neighbors you are standing next to? Then pick one and tell them, neighbor, I think I like you. Now I did not say love, I said like, so please be careful. Don't start expressing love to somebody here, we may misunderstand you. Look at them and tell them, neighbor, the reason you are standing next to me, it's because I told the last person who was standing next to me that if you are not ready to praise God in his house, they should not stand next to me. 
so they left that's why you are here now i warn you also i said you talk to them i tell them i warn you also if you shall keep quiet and not praise the lord next month don't stand next to me You like them? Yes. Tell them neighbor, neighbor. I, have a I have a confession to make. You may not even understand, may not even understand. Where, I where I have come from. Even what I've gone through. Even what I've gone through. And, the and the victories I might have seen, might have seen. To, be to be here today. Therefore, Therefore if you hear me shout hear me or see me praise, even hear me cry or hear me laugh please don't interfere because i'm the only one who understands what the lord has done in my life so right now tell a neighbor right now right here Give me some space. I want to praise the Lord all by myself and give him a dance in his house. Oh. Somebody say yes. Did you bring your Bibles? Lift them up high. This is called Nyayo Stadium. It's called named after Moi. And he said, Tingisha Nione, Tingisha, Tingisha. <laughs> Say, This is my Bible. And I love it. And tonight, I declare my life, my family, the work of my hands, my country shall be blessed by the words of this book in jesus name amen put your bibles down celebrate the lord with a shout and a praise and a come on give the lord a crazy praise and a crazy shout in this house don't forget your neighbor has warned you you keep quiet next month you'll be standing outside nobody will want to sit next to you praise the name of the lord Amen. hallelujah Amen. god bless you let's be seated please woman you are an eternal excellency the joy of many generations come on isaiah 60 15. there are so many scriptures that talk about women in the bible eh? And it seems like Pastor Esther Obaske spends time digging them up <laughs> and feeding them to you. I'm honored to be here, woman of God. Thank you for inviting me. I'm greatly, greatly honored. I'm an African preacher. And African preachers, we love our microphones. We don't share them with others very easily. So when you find an African preacher giving you their microphone, is a great honor. And I never take it for granted. God bless you. I came with Pastor Moses. Uh, Moses Ngetich is our pastor in charge of the youth in our church. Married with the two boys. And uh, he's my armor bearer today. And we bless the Lord for him. Can we say amen? amen. You have given me a glass of water. I want to de declare what I have here is water. So if you see me. I didn't come with it. I found it here. So if you see me behaving funny, it's what I found on that table over there. <laughs> so I cannot vouch for the contents, but I just don't drink me. So, I guess this is what you drink here. So, so if you see me behave abnormally, it's what I'm taking here. I didn't come with it. I found it here. I just found it here. I just found it here. Isn't it great just pray for this country? God tells Israel, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Because if Jerusalem prospers, you prosper. 
Pray for the peace of Kenya. If Kenya prospers, you prosper. The greatness of a country is not known by the calamities that visit that country. The greatness of our people is the way they come out of the calamities. The fact that we have been visited by calamities, fire at the airport and uh, the tragedy in Westgate, does not define who we are. Who we are is the way we come out of those situations as a nation and as a people. And I'm grateful that we have come out of it praying in the name of the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. And therefore I call on you to continue praying. We battled for the peace of this country on our knees and in prayer. The peace of this country has not come cheaply. It has come because Christians have prayed. Left to the politicians and their games, we will be fighting again. But the fact that we ignored them, because the church went in prayer, and God has given us peace in this nation. And those who have taken an oath with death, and made a treaty with death, shall not overcome us. Because we have a God who is able to overrule. Thank you for those scriptures, servant of God. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. Somebody say amen. amen. And therefore, let us continue upholding our country in prayer, talking to the Father and trusting God for this nation. This is the year of Jubilee. It's the 50th year of the nation of Kenya. Yesterday, I was spending time with... Uh, a brethren from Parklands Baptist Church and I was a speaker in, uh, in a time when they just met together and they wanted to honor the pastors in their house. They've just bought their pastors houses, there was some money they still owed the bank and they were gathering together as uh, believers. They said in the year of Jubilee we must make our pastors debt free. I said I like that. And I went to stand with them in that occasion as they were raising money to clear any mortgage that their pastors may be having. I said, that's a fantastic dream. I know what it means because I live in a debt-free house myself. And therefore, I know what it means when you sleep and wake up and don't expect someone knocking on your door with a fee note or rent demand. You just wake up and go. I sense some jealousy in this house. I just gave you my testimony and you are looking at me like I've never taken a mortgage. I don't intend to take one. No, I don't intend to take one. And I, since I was young, I believed God that when I build my house, I'll build it debt free. When I buy my house, I'll buy debt free. And uh, maybe one day I'll come back and teach you how to do it because it is there in scripture in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I said, I'll stand with you so that your pastors can live in a house where they are debt free. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. The days when our pastors had to suffer so that they can minister well, those days are long gone. It was a misunderstanding of scripture. Pastors have to be taken care of so they can minister effectively. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God? Yes. The year of Jubilee, we find it recorded for us in the book of... Uh, uh, Leviticus, but I'm not going there today because that scripture, or rather the, the season is repeated again and again in scripture. And uh, Isaiah chapter 61 picks up the theme. Is it, is it, are these Queen Esther's? I'm in the right meeting here. Oh, they are so quiet, I'm getting a bit worried. I'm not, I'm not used to people so quiet when I'm preaching. My congregation have a lot of faith in me. That they say amen even before I make a point. <laughs> because they believe a point is still coming. So when people keep quiet for long, I start getting worried. And I start getting homesick. I start missing my own congregation. I want to go back to Umoja tomorrow. Where as soon as I stand, I hear amen. I get my fix. And I start going. I say the year of Jubilee or the season of Jubilee is repeated again and again. But in Isaiah chapter 61, Isaiah talks about it from verse 1 to verse 3. And then our Lord Jesus Christ, he comes into Galilee uh, and he comes to Nazareth and picks up the scroll in the synagogue and he speaks the, the scroll and opens to the book of Isaiah chapter 61. And it's quoted for us in the book, of, uh, the book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. I hope you have got your Bibles there. 
In the book of, of Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, this is what the Bible says. If you are a Bible reader, I'm trying to see whether I put my Bible marker there. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Verse 19, and he says, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. NRV says, to declare the year of God's favor. The King James says, the acceptable year of the Lord. The NIV says, the year of the Lord's favor. But my favorite is the Message Bible. It says, and to declare, this is the year for God to act. I don't know what you have been expecting. Am I in the right group? I've come as a father. Me, I'm not a preacher. No, preachers will come. Me, I come as a father. That's what I was invited to do. So all I'm coming is to declare things over your life. Preachers will come. Sija kuja kualetea kompe. Mime kuja kufanya juhudi yangu. Kama baba. Buona sfue sana. I've just come to bless this ministry. And to bless your pastor. And to bless all of you. And to bless your family. You must understand. There is a role for fathers. Right now my friend Bishop Mark is preaching on the mystery of fatherhood. Because it's not understood in this country. Why do we call it a mystery? Because fatherhood is something that must be revealed to you. Not by flesh and blood. It is not taught in Bible school. There is no subject on fatherhood. In any Bible school. But it's in scripture. So when a father comes, I come just to declare blessings on QEG. One as well, son. When you have a conference, he gives me a topic. I'll come and do exposition because I'm a Bible teacher. Even now, if you give me any scripture, I'll just expose it because that's my life flow. I love that. But today, the few minutes I have, just allow me to bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. And don't leave here and go, people telling you, how oh, many you go? I have a word. I know what I'm doing right here. Praise the name of the Lord. He declares this is the year for God to act. The devil is a liar. What you have been expecting for a long time. What you have been trusting God for for a long time. What has not yet happened for a long time. In the year of Jubilee, Jesus is anointed to come and declare this is the year for God to Did you find a neighbor you can talk to? Come and push them to the and tell them neighbor This year is the year for God to act on my behalf On behalf of your family On behalf of your business On behalf of this country The devil is a liar he shall not have you. He shall not have this nation. Because the year of Jubilee is the year for God. I knew I have a congregation here. Somebody say amen. amen. What Pastor Esther was saying is true. The devil is behind. In his program. And you know something? He's not going to complete it. Because we are putting a stop to him. Whatever plan he might have had against your family, against your children, against your, your, this country, it is aborting today in the name of Jesus. For the year of Jubilee is the year for God.
is the year for God to act. The devil may think he has got you. Man, I'm looking for somebody here. I said the devil may think he has got you. He may talk like he has got you. He may behave like he has got you. Am I talking to somebody here? But he does not have you. He does not possess you. Because this is the year of Jubilee. It's the year for God. Whatever is pending in your life must be fulfilled this year. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus says because he has anointed me understand what Jesus is just saying he says for 30 years you have known me as Jesus of Nazareth am I in the right am I, am I in the right group here for 30 years you have known me as Jesus of Nazareth in Acts chapter 10 verse 38 Peter preaching in the house of Cornelius says how God anointed come on help me church how God anointed Jesus of with what with the Holy Spirit and power who now from there went everywhere doing good and healing all those that were oppressed by the devil for God was with him look at me Jesus of Nazareth Nijinalake la kipande Did you know what I've just said? That was his name in his national ID I'm looking for my ID It is here My ID is here the name I have in the ID will tell you what my name is, what location, sub-location, and what county I come from. So Jesus of Nazareth was his name in his national ID. But when the Holy Spirit came upon him, it translated him from Jesus of Nazareth to the anointed of God and there's an anointing in this house in the year of Jubilee that is coming on Esther Obasike from wherever your location is and my sister from wherever your location is transforming you are we together in this house you see, Pastor Esther, when they talked about uh, 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 Jesus of Nazareth, they asked themselves, has anything good ever come out of? Have you even heard of a prophet coming out of? Listen, like my sister said, her home is very far. Some of you are coming from places that do not appear on Google Map. Even if you put Google Map. Google map will say Nairobi, Mombasa, Kisumu, Kakamega, and, and then they will reach a place they say and others. You know, some of you may be coming from others. They don't even appear on the Google map. But when the anointing comes upon you, it shall enable you to do what people from your village have never come. I was sent to prophesy to someone here. Where are you? I'm looking for wherever you are. Where are you? You are like Jesus of Nazareth. They said, has anything good come out of? Have you ever even had a doctor from that village? Women from that village don't get married. When they get married, they don't get children. 
Even when they are married, they die young. But I've come to declare that you shall go beyond the expectation. In the year of Jubilee, you shall go beyond the expectations of your neighbors and your village mates and your chief. I know I was sent to somebody in this house. I'm looking for where you are. Because the anointing is here to transform you from Esther, from Kiambu, from Wenyu Amachakos, from Cherono of Kericho, from Amatendechere of Kakamega. Transform you to an anointed woman of God who shall be able to do what they said you shall not be able to do. Somebody say yes. Because this is the year of Jubilee. It is the year for God. Me, yeah, I told you I'm not preaching. I've just come to bless you. I've just come to bless you. Because I know that this year, this is the year of Jubilee. It is the year for God to act with Esther. That property you are buying. You must understand what the Bible, what, what, what the Bible really says. Can I help you here? Now I'll go back to my iPhone now. Because the scripture I want... It, 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 you can only now find it in the message Bible in Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49 verse 8, it says, when the acceptable time comes in the King James, when the year of Jubilee comes, when the year of favor comes, that's Isaiah 49 verse 8. But I'll not preach from the King James version, no. I'll read for you what it says in the message Bible, and that's where I'll preach from. You, you are the choir. That's why I'm sitting here. Praise God. Praise God again. You look like men and women of God. Have they told you that before? I'm confirming it. Are you in Isaiah? Chapter 49. If you have got an older translation, you are going to see stars. I want, to, I want you to, I know this is a sea stars meeting. Uh, <laughs> this is a meeting of sea stars. Uh, sea stars or sea stars. There are people, if they come here, they're just sea stars. No, Jatazeri. <laughs> but Isaiah chapter 49, verse 8. Is, this is what it says. God also says. Come on, what does he say? God also says. So, who is making this declaration? What God also says. In the King James or New King James or NIV, it is talking about the acceptable, in the acceptable time. I answered you. But in the end, listen in the Message Bible, this will bless you. In the Message Bible, this is what it says. God also says, when the time is ripe, I answer you. When victory is due, I help you. I form you and use you to reconnect the people with me, to put the land in order, to reset the families in the ruined properties. I tell the prisoners, come on out. You are free. And those huddled in fear, it is all right. It is safe now. There will be footstands all along the roads. Picnic on all the hills. Nobody hungry. Nobody thirsty. Shade from the sun. Shelter from the wind. For the compassionate one guides them. And takes them to the best springs. He says, I'll make all my mountains into roads. Turn them into a super highway.
This is the year of Jubilee. Amen. The acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. The year of God's favor. Amen. The time for God to act. Amen. When a special anointing is falling upon his people. Amen. Transforming ordinary women Amen. into extraordinary women. Amen. Come on, bump your not your neighbor. Amen. Don't look at me like that. There's an anointing upon my life transforming my life and changing me from what you know to what God expects me to do. Somebody say amen. amen. You must be the first lawyer to do things lawyers are not supposed to do. You must be the first mukamba to attempt things that kambas have never thought about. You must be the first Maasai woman to attempt to do things that others have never done. Are you understanding me, church? These things Pastor is talking about. Believe God and declare, I'll be the first Kalenjin woman to write a check of a million. Believe it. You can do it. In Jesus' name. Can we say amen? amen? Don't just do the ordinary. The normal. What others are doing. Because people from your village have been saying they cannot. When the time is right. The year of Jubilee is called when the time is not right, right, right. When the time is right, yeah, the majira uh, yame. I'm about to prophesy to somebody. I'm about to prophesy to somebody here. I'm about to prophesy to somebody here. The time is ripe. The year for God to act is here, and the time is ripe right now. Sit down, sit down, get, get, get this point. Get this point. I can see we can do business with you. I, I love this kind of congregation. Two cannot work together unless they agree. Looks like you have an agreement here. If you try to eat a pineapple which is not ripe, it's a disaster. Am I correct? It is sour. Twangy. If you try to eat a mango which is not ripe, messes with your teeth. Am I correct? If you try to eat a banana which is not ripe, it is so hard. Am I correct? If you try to eat an orange which is not ripe, it is sour. You think you are eating a lemon, yet it is written orange. It is green and not orange. It is hard and not soft. So when the Bible says, when the time is ripe, God is saying, what was bitter yesterday, is no longer bitter today. What was sour yesterday, is no longer sour today. What was tough yesterday is no longer tough today. Because the time is right. Am I in the right church here? What you could not consume yesterday, you shall consume today. Because it's no longer sour. It's no longer bitter. It is soft, it is ripe, it is sweet, no longer sour, because the time is And that's why I said I want to prophesy to somebody here. The time is ripe for you. Am I, am I in the right church here? The time is ripe for you to start that new business. The time is ripe for you to finish that degree. The time is ripe for you to build that house. The time is ripe for you to buy that property. Tell you about the time is right.
When the time is right, yes. where they denied you a visa, you'll get a visa because the time is right. When the time is right, the business you could not start shall start now because the time is right. Pastor Esther, can I prophesy to some people here? There's a girl I'm declaring to the time is right for your marriage. The person with your ring shall locate you, shall find you this year, because the time is right. Tell your neighbor for me, neighbor, this time I'm serious. Take a photograph with me, because by October, November, you shall not even know me, because the time is right. For my dressing to change, the time is right. For my driving to change, the time is right. For my job to change, the time is. What you could not do last year, you are doing this year. What you could not achieve last year, you are achieving this time. What defeated you yesterday, you shall overcome this year. Somebody say yes. Push your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, you may not understand this kind of service. Tell your neighbor you don't understand where you are. Let me tell you where you are right now. Tell them this is the kind of service where, where HIV positive becomes negative. This is the kind of service. This is a kind of service. Am I in the right church here? Are you talking to your neighbor? Tell your neighbor, this is the kind of service. Your husband who, you, who has disappeared for three weeks, you may find him at your gate waiting for you. After this service. Tell your neighbor for me, neighbor, this is the kind of service. If you have been barren, for five years, six years, eight years, today. Ola kayanda raba ba kayanto lima. Aseli kayando riba bo zikaliba. There's somebody here that I'm talking to right now. There's somebody I've been sent to prophesy to. Time is ripe for a baby to be born. Time is ripe for you to be a mother. For someone to be a father. Somebody say yes. The time is. Expect that in nine months and 15 minutes, you'll be dedicating a baby in a hospital somewhere. From a mother who has not been a mother. Somebody say yes. Because the time is... The time is right for your promotion to come through. I tried to get a visa, they refused. That was when the time was not right. Apply again. I say apply again. Knock again. Seek again. Ask again. Now that the time is right. Those who said no yesterday, today they shall say yes. Are we together? Can we continue this? Yes. I told you I don't want to preach because you have a lot of preachers who come around here. I don't want to compete with them. So, <laughs> so I, don't, I, mean, I just want to bless you as a father. God also says, when the time is right, he says this. This is what he says. When the time is right, I answer you. In the year of Jubilee, God says the time is right. And he says, I answer you. This is the year for God to act. I'm looking for where you are. There's a prayer warrior in Queen Esther's. You have been trusting God. Like my pastor Esther was saying, you have been praying. You have been sowing seed. You have been fasting. You have been seeking. You have been knocking. 
but because the time was not right, it did not happen. But today, with the anointing in this house and the anointing that I carry, I come to declare the time for your answer has come. I address every principality. Am I in the right church? I say address every principality, every power, every ruler of wickedness. I address every principality operating over your life, over your business, over your children that has been withholding the answers to your prayer. Right now, release those answers. Release those answers. Release those answers. Somebody say, I receive. Somebody say, I receive. Somebody say, I receive. It's the year of Jubilee. The acceptable year of the Lord. The year of God's favor. The time for God to act. The time is right. And therefore I declare. Every miracle released from heaven. With your name on it. Shall manifest in your life. Every finance released from heaven. Meant for your business shall manifest in your life everything that is supposed to be in your possession i release it right now right people con gifted people that you need for your business let them connect with you right now this is the year for god to answer your prayers no miracle meant for you shall go to your neighbors no customers meant for your salon shall go to your neighbor no client meant for your business shall go to your neighbor this is the year for god to act and the time is right for you to for him to answer your prayers somebody say amen Tell two people, I receive, I receive, I receive. I just tell them, I told you. Come on, tell them, I told you. November. Please. Don't look at me to look the way I look right now. Are we still together? He says when the time is right, I answer you. The next statement he makes, he says, when victory is due. Push your neighbor gently and tell your neighbor, I know from where you are, you don't see it yet. But God, from where he is, he can see it and he declares your victory is due the devil is a liar he may think he has got your family he may think he has got your business he may think he has got you he doesn't know what is about to come in your life your victory is around the corner Tell somebody near you, neighbor, this is not the time to give up. This is not the time to backslide. Your victory is around the corner. He says when your victory is due, he knows it is due. Can we say amen? amen. Jesus, Pastor Esther, Jesus tells two of his disciples, tells them, get out of here. Go and enter the next village. You will find a cult. Tied. On which no man has ever sat. And tied. Bring it here. From where the disciples were, they could not see it. But from where Jesus was, he could see it. You see, there are some resources reserved for you from where you are you cannot see it but from where he is he can see it 
if you are still he has sent me to tell you your victory is due don't give up don't surrender don't backslide keep on moving on when you take the next the next property you buy will have things that, ha, i like that story somebody say amen the devil is a liar that young man who walked out on you refused to marry you shall be ashamed when they meet you next time i'm talking to somebody here i'm talking to somebody here that young man who walked away and said i cannot marry you he shall be embarrassed because after this message you are going somewhere they shall look for you again but they shall not find you because you are victory can i talk to somebody here you must understand when the time is ripe you must move from where you have been staying to another place yet there's some lady here can i prophesy some man walked out on you left with you two children and condemned you and thought you shall never make it because they don't know you'll meet jb and i've come to prophesy i'm changing your destiny in the name of jesus christ somebody say yes can i talk to somebody here when that young man will that man will come to look for you next time in the single room where they left you they shall find you are not there because the time is right i said the time is right you are coming out of an extension you are coming out of the back room you are going to the main house I know I was sent to talk to some people here. I say I know I was sent to talk to some people here. To tell them the time is ripe for God to answer you. The time is ripe for your victory is due. Somebody say amen. Your children shall finish university. Your daughter shall get married. Your son shall finish college. Somebody say yes. Because your victory, I say your victory is due. I say that your victory is due. Push it over to the neighbor. It's the year of Jubilee, the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of God's favor, the time for God to act. Tell the neighbor, therefore, the time is right. Your fortune must change. Somebody say amen. amen. Sister Esther, he says, when your victory is due, I will help you. Yeah. <laughs> when your victory is due, I'll help you. Listen to what he says. When your victory is due, I will help you. Can I say that again? When your victory is due, I will help you. Get this, get this. Because I'm glad I'm talking to women here. Because it's only women who can understand what I'm going to say. After, after nine months of pregnancy, can I talk to someone here? After nine months of pregnancy, a time of crisis comes when the baby must come out the tragedy is when that time comes and you have got no strength to push then the baby you are in danger the baby is in danger the time has come but you have got no strength to push can i talk to someone here i know pastor esther is here the most difficult people to comfort is an expectant mother who got a still bath. 
Because for nine months, she was spitting, she was vomiting. Now, you stop interfering with these people. Let them do what they are called to do. I'm not allergic to money. Let them, if they want to put it on the, on the altar, let them put it there. You'll collect it later. Just leave it there. In my congregation, they put it all over. I walk all over it when I'm preaching. In my Bible, my, if you must understand, my bookmarkers are notes from different countries. They are notes. So this money business, I've got no problem. My bookmarkers, it's money. If you come to these bookmarkers, it's with Chinese yuan, British pounds. American dollars. They are, they are bookmarkers in my Bible. So I've got no problem with the Kenya shillings. So you can drop them down in there, wherever. Where was I before I was interrupted? The time has come. And you have got no power to push. Or sometimes Pastor Esther is not no power to push. Is you get a midwife who is not conscientious. A midwife can actually mess you up. Am I correct? A wrong doctor can mess you up. Listen to what God is saying in that scripture. That you may understand it. He's saying many times in the past, you have expected a miracle. But you have miscarried because of the midwives. Get this. Get this. You have expected a promotion, but it has aborted. You have expected some finances, but they have aborted. You have expected that you are going to get married, but it has aborted. What God is saying in the year of Jubilee, I shall be the midwife of your next miracle. He's saying in this year, for your next promotion, I shall be the midwife. For your next engagement, I shall be the midwife. For your next miracle, I shall be the midwife. For your next financial breakthrough, I shall be the midwife. For the next expansion of Queen Esther, I shall be the midwife. Tell your neighbor for me, neighbor. <laughs> With God as the midwife of my miracle, it shall not die. It shall not miscarry. It shall not be aborted. It shall manifest. It shall come to pass. Somebody say yes. You shall not miscarry your next promotion. You shall not miscarry your next miracle. You shall not miscarry your next financial breakthrough. You are not miscarrying anything else. It shall not abort. It shall come to pass because the time is right. That's why I'm telling somebody here, take a picture with me today. Because next time you see me, ooh, I shall be looking bad. Hey, if you think I look smart today wait until we meet in November I shall be looking bad because the time is ripe for me to step up again somebody say my, my time is ripe my time is ripe the time is ripe somebody say the time is your miracle must come to pass your promotion must manifest. The man with your ring must show up. Wedding bells must be had in your home. A baby must cry in your house. The time is right. The devil is alive. There is an anointing transforming your life. What they said you can never do, you shall be able to do. What they say you cannot accomplish, you will accomplish. Where they said you shall never go, you will be able to go. The time is... This is the year for God to... Says 
So the time is ripe. I answer you. When victory is due, I help you. Then he says, I form you and use you to reconnect the people with me and to put the land in order. I form you that I may use you to reconnect the people with me and to put the land in order. Are we still together? Or did I, leave, did I leave you somewhere? Are you still in the year of Jubilee? He's saying, I form you so that I may use you to reconnect the people with me and to put the land in order. And the land which is in order, listen to this, the land which is in order is a land where, listen to these words, he says it's a land where we tell the prisoners, you are free. Those who are huddled in fear, it's all right. It is safe now. Nobody hungry. Nobody thirsty. Shed from the sun. Shelter from the wind. For the compassionate one shall guide them. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. The Lord says, He is forming you so that he may use you to reconnect the people with him you don't understand what i've just said have you no 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 you haven't understood it this is what he's saying choir can i preach to you can i just preach to you here they can watch let's have some church just by ourselves Oh no, they are jealous. So let's, so let's preach together. Can I preach to all of us? Look at your neighbor. To your neighbor, God says, the reason is answering you. The reason is giving you victory. The reason is attending to you. The reason is doing all things in your life. Is so that he may use you to reconnect some people with him. You see, you don't understand. There are some people who, who have a memory of you when you used to be broke. Can I talk to somebody here? The memory they have of you is when you are going to school in a pair of shorts. Can I talk to somebody here? The last time they took a picture with you is when you are in the Kangobiri girls in a green skirt and a white blouse in the form 3 you took a photograph at the school notice board that is the memory they have of you can I continue the memory they have of you is when they gave you D in mathematics There is a teacher who gave you D in mathematics. And you're asking D for what? They told you D for dog. But it is because you had never met me. But now that you are... Am I in the right church here? And now that we have met... That D is not for dog. That D shall be for doctor. I was sent to prophesy to somebody here. Who, who am I talking to here? There are people who, whose memory they have of you is of a failure. Never do well kind of a woman. Shall never make it in life. Shall never amount to anything. It's because they never knew. You shall connect with Pastor Esther and come to Queen Esther. And you see your life shall... And your life shall be your life shall be changed and as it is being changed somebody say amen they shall meet you the next time they shall look at you with your eyes open their mouth and say guy 
They shall say more than me. They shall say in your sight, oh. Am I talking to the right person? Because what they know about you. Am I talking to somebody here? Next time some of you go to the village, the kind of car you shall enter in with the village. Your former classmates shall look at you and say, Jehovah, this must be God. This kind God, oh, I've never seen another. This kind God, oh, blessed be only. We'll pick it up. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Why is he doing all that? Because there are some people, until they see what the Lord has done in your life, they shall not be saved. Hey! A poor, broken, broke, moneyless you shall not change them. But when they see a smart, well-dressed, well-driving, can I prophesy to somebody here? There are some ladies in this meeting today. The next time your mother comes to Nairobi and comes to your house, she shall cry. Because she never thought you shall live in a house like that. She never imagined you shall drive a car like that. She never imagined you shall live in a place like that. But I've come to declare, this is the year for God to act. This is the year of God's favor. This is the acceptable year of the Lord. The time is ripe for you. For God to give you victory. For God to answer your prayers. For God to lift you up himself. Somebody say yes. Your father never imagined you shall buy him a car. You shall buy him a suit. Some of you shall surprise your fathers. Shall surprise your mothers. Shall surprise your sisters. In the name of Jesus. Because when you connect with the anointing that is flowing in this house, your life cannot be the same. It will be transformed. And the time is right. That's why I've been sent just to prophesy over your life. I say over your business. I say over your children. What killed your mother shall not kill you. What killed your older sister shall not kill you. What killed your grandmother shall not kill you. No, because you are no longer in that connection. The time is right for you to be transferred to the bloodline of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Somebody say amen. Look at me. Look at me. When Paul is writing to the Philippians, chapter 4, verse 19, he says, And my God. And my God. Say it again. And my God shall supply all your according to his riches in glory in Christ. Now look at me ladies, look at me ladies. If Paul was to be like some of us today, with the false humility, you'd have said, and God shall. But God, Paul does not say, and God shall. He says, and my. Not God, my. Why? Because the Philippians were watching his life. Though he was a prisoner, he did not dress like a prisoner. He was not in jail. He lived in his own house. Read Roma. Read Acts 28. And they wondered, what kind of God is this? This man goes as he wants and is called a prisoner. He dresses well and is a prisoner. 
what kind of God is this? And he told him, no, the same God who has done this in my life is the one I'm talking to you about. And he says, therefore, my God, there are people who are looking for what God has done in your life and they want to connect with your God. No, no, no. Some of you have not understood. I, have you understood what I'm saying? When Naomi was still in Moab, she lost her husband. Lost her two boys. She was left with two daughters-in-law. She told them, ladies, I'm going home. Go back to your people. Oprah went back. That's Ruth. Said, you know what? I've been watching your life. Beseech me not to leave you. Because I've made up my mind. Where you go? Your people shall be. And above all, your God shall be. This kind God. Oh. I said there's a God at work in your life. He's answering your prayer. He's giving you a victory. He's lifting you up. He's changing situations. And your neighbors are watching. Your neighbors are watching. Your sisters are watching. Your workmates are watching. Your boss is watching. And one of these days they shall look at you and say, I want to connect with that God. I want to connect with that God. May they connect with your God. My time is. I cannot. You know, I can't finish everything so that you have to invite me back. Listen to this. I'll finish with verse 11. In verse 11, he says, I'll make all my mountains into roads. Then he says, Not just roads, into a super highway. I'll make all my mountains into roads. Not just roads. Mm -mm. You must understand what God is saying here. I'll make all my mountains into roads. Me, I'm, me, I'm blessing you. I'll make all my mountains into roads. And turn them into a super highway. There are two blessings in that verse. Before a contractor builds a road, he buys hills. Because hills contain the quarry stones he needs to make ballast. The maram he needs to make roads are found on hills. So the first thing he does is to buy the hills in the area. So that he can bring machinery to turn the stones into ballast. God is declaring to someone here. In the mountain in your life right now yeah. is my possession. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I know I was sent to talk to somebody here. In the mountain in your life right now is no longer your mountain. The Lord says it's my mountain. He has bought it by the blood of Jesus. He has purchased it by the blood of Jesus. Come on, tell my neighbor. No wonder. I can speak to the mountains. Be ye removed and they shall obey because they are no longer mine. They belong to him. Somebody say amen. amen. The mountain you see in front of you is no longer yours. 
The Lord says it is my mountain. He has purchased it. He's making ballast out of it so that he can make a road. He, ah. Can I continue? Can I continue? Pastor Esther. You see, if you are expecting a handcart, you don't need a road. You need a feeder road. Can I continue? If you are just expecting a pickup, then you need just a road. But if you are expecting trailers, I said if you are expecting trailers, you don't need a feeder road. You don't need just a road. You need a super highway. Can I talk to somebody here? And God is saying, the road to your life are making a super highway. Because what God wants to do in your life, a counter is not enough. A pickup is not enough. And Kokoteni cannot do. Only a trailer can do. Somebody push your neighbor, tell your neighbor, if you hear some rambling coming my way, if you hear some rambling coming my way, is a trailers from the treasury in heaven finding their way into my life. Somebody say amen. Somebody say yes. And I, I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. For the kind of thing God wants to do in Queen Esther's, trailers only trailers 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 only trailers shall be able to perform somebody say amen am i talking to somebody here that tp jakes is talking about i was with him in his old house sat at his table ate with him like this we are just eating he's here and i'm here we, we are picking from the same plate and he told me jb listen to me when you see God bringing earth moving equipment around you, around you, because what he wants to do is big. If you want to build just a chicken coop, only a hoe and a spade is enough. But when you want to build a super highway, you need komatsu. Caterpillar. Machines that can chew stones. I'm not talking to somebody here. You need some caterpillar trucks that will carry hundred tons of ballast at a time. So that a super highway can be built. You don't even need you, you don't use manual labor. You no, know, it is only machinery, machinery Lilo at that time. And there are some of you here. What God is going to do in your life. You don't need a spade. You are not using a hoe. You are not using a sururu. You are using earth moving equipment. Caterpillar. Komatsu. Trailers. Are moving in your life. Doing things you never thought. Because the spirit of the Lord. Is upon me. Because he has a no. You know what I thought? I thought I'd finish with Ephesians for uh, if, with the look for. I don't have the time. Because my time is up and I'm a man under authority. I don't want to be told not to come back again because I overstayed my time. And some of you ladies, you are carrying someone's dinner. And some of you ladies, there's a man waiting for you at your door who has not appeared for three weeks. I want you to go and open for him. <laughs> Can I talk to somebody here? And I agree with your pastor. After this message, put on your phone. After this message, as you leave, put on your phone. Some of you start getting text messages of answered prayer, of miracles that have happened, of things that are happening. Some of you get text messages. Your promotion is through. Your loan is approved. Your finances are released. Somebody will get a message. 
Honey, I propose to marry you. Are you still available? Now, some of you, the problem is, Pastor Esther prophesies over you. I can't prophesy over you. And then you find the man waiting for you today, and you're asking, who called Aichi? You shut up. Remember, it was a prophetic word that dragged him from the bar, brought him back to your house. Even if there is another woman in his life, right now with the anointing that I carry, I put an enmity between him and the other woman right now. Right now. She shall chase him today. She shall chase him out today. He shall find his way to your house. And don't you keep him waiting outside. Receive him in the name of the Lord. And tell him, honey, I knew you are coming back. Why? The Lord spoke to me in the service. I shall find you here. Somebody say amen. amen. When you get a text of a young man proposing, don't answer back and say, let me pray about it. No. Come and say, can I meet you today? Where are you? I prophesied over you. Come and you seek who? Can I buy you breakfast tomorrow before I go to church? And since you, you go, to, I don't know why you go to church. If you are going to RTGC, you can take them to Echo, you can take them to Silver Spring, buy them a breakfast. Can you repeat what you just said? And there's a finger there for you to do the necessary. When you go to the house of God, tell the woman of God, tell her, Mommy, look at that finger. The word of the Lord has come to. This is the year for God too. The time is every promise to you. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Do you understand me, church? This is the year for God to act. Anybody who despised you shall be silenced. Anybody who wrote you off shall regret it. Anybody walked away from you shall regret it. Somebody say amen. May God wipe away your tears. May oh God heal your broken heart. May no more demonic activity operate around your home. Because this is a year of Jubilee. What is it he will do? Listen to what I'm saying. Every time, some of you are listening to me. Every time, she's doing business with God, and someone is like, Look at me. I'm not bad to look at. Though I'm 60 years old, I'm not bad to look at. So look at me. This is what I'm going to say. There are some of you here, demonic activity has messed up your life. And you just think it is normal. Sister Esther, can I say just this? And you think it is normal. It's not normal. Lack of sleep is not normal. The fact that your daughter must get sick when the exam is around is not normal. It's not normal that every time you cook, Gideri must get burnt. It's not normal. That every time you boil milk, it must boil over. It's not normal. Don't accept it. Can I talk to somebody here? Yes. It's not normal that every time you drive, you must get a puncture. No, me, I've not gotten a puncture for over 10 years. And I drive on the same roads. See, at the, every time you go to Nakuru, that's what Chomele exhausts in Ivasha. No, it's not normal. You don't have to be welding your car every time you leave Nairobi. It's not normal. And therefore, the anointing in this house. I speak to, I speak to every demonic activity over your lives and over your children it's not normal for your kiosk to be broken to every month for your shop to lose stock every month it is not normal 
and therefore right now I address those demonic activities that have been designed to me keep you broke and without money collecting your child from school every time I speak to those demonic activities that are affecting your finances the health of your children you shall cease from today you shall cease from today May you walk in the year of God's favor. May you know this is acceptable year of the Lord. May you know the season is ripe for you to go ahead. May you know God is answering your prayer. And may God use you to reconnect people with Him. To set your family in order. I'm sitting down. But as I sit, I declare everybody in this house when next time your mother sees you she'll tell the fellow women in the market ATM my ATM has come and you shall be the ATM for your mother for your father for your sisters and for your brothers Somebody say amen. You are at the ATM for your mother, for your father, for your sisters, for your brothers. Jesus name. Put your hands together. is able to do just what he says. You have not, we have not seen this type before. I don't think in years I have stood up for hours as a man is talking. I told you the devil is behind time, and our father said he will never catch up. <laughs> he will never catch up. He's behind time and he's behind time. Every day the devil will be behind time over your life. Let me read the scripture I started with to tell you as a credible witness of what our father has said. He says Zechariah chapter 8, just wait where you are. He says that the word of the Lord came unto me saying, of course, this will be the, the tenth month, the month of gladness and cheerful feast. Thus says the Lord of hosts, It shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and inhabitants of many cities, and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to Kiwiji and to seek the Lord of hosts. Then someone will tell them, I will also go with you. Yeah, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Kiwiji and to pray before the Lord. Listen to 23. Why? In those days it shall come to pass that them men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations. We take hold of the scat of him that is a Jew, a born again, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard. I am not getting a witness in the house. The time has come. Because God will act. Because it is a time that is ripe. Because your victory is now. And God is the midwife. So you're safe and your destiny is safe. The news will not be all over town. And ten of your friends will hold your state. 
Tell unbelievers in your office, in your husband's place, in your village, then we will be holding you. Where do you normally go every first Saturday? We shall go with you. For your news is all over time. Mark it. You are entering 2014 in style. You see, Bishop JB said, these TDJs we are talking, they were seated in his old house. There is a season for old things. And there is a season for new things. They ate in his old house. The next time he visits him, he will be seated in a house where minerals are under. By this time next year, all of you that are tenants, as the Lord liveth, you shall purchase your house in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, you see what Bishop has said? The church of Baptist Church decided that none of their pastors will go with debt. And they said, we will pay the mortgage of our pastors. Do you know what mortgage is? And for members to sit down, say our pastor is owing house of this, we will clear it because this is jubilee. That's the kind of congregation I want. And I know all of you that are in debt, whether mortgage or you have borrowed for school fees for hospital, I stand to pray for divine connection. You shall be debt free in the name of Jesus. I look forward that by 2014 we shall have ministers that are free of any debt. I don't know how God is going to do it for you. I don't know God is going to do it. But if this is the year for God to act, he will act in a strange way. Those of you who are so busy in marketing KQEG, the Lord gave me a word for you. When our father said in that scripture, that God will bless you to use you to reconnect people with him. Reconnect. You are busy marketing QEG everywhere. Market QEG. Supermarket, I know some of you. Your mouth can't close. You go to office QEG. Quite to QEG. Everywhere QEG. You are positioned for tremendous blessing. Our father was reading that scripture what the Lord impressed in my heart is that because you have publicly marketed him he has to defend you so that he will use you to bring presidents to himself governors to himself bank managers to himself powerful business tycoons to himself the poor to himself international community to himself he said because of the deal between me and you i will bless you so the blessing we are crossing over to november and december will be sweat free sweat free all you need is to market the gospel tell everybody you see about what god is doing Tell them it doesn't matter what you are hearing about me. Forget it. God is at work. God is at work. Don't go to unbelievers telling them you have problems. No. When they see you, let them envy you. They, they, hey, this can go here. God has already put a spiritual engagement ring on your finger. So, 
they see you, they say you are not married. Don't begin to cry like them. When they are telling you you are not married, tell them, for don't sympathize with me. I, am, I already have a wedding date. Hey! At the wedding day, I come to from today, you shall cease from being a sympathizing object. If I were you, I will make sure I have a CD of today, a copy. If it means you lining up at Solution Center tomorrow, within the week, next week. Because if you play this CD in your car, as you're sleeping, your body will be wired to deliver. Because it's a prayer. Even when you're sleeping, the prayer goes on. When you're in the car, you're shouting, Amen, 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 Amen. Those of you that belong to Solution, you will remember the testimony of Pastor Leke Sanusi. When I preached a certain sermon, in London, and one man bought the CD and listened day and night. You remember the course he failed, failed and failed a professional course. I had spoken on the spirit of excellence. The man of God was telling us in Kenya, he scored for the first time in the entire UK, I think 108 percent. It was on their paper, it was everywhere. Their pastor was speaking in Nairobi. And was telling us the story that the man took the CD, said, I've never had it like this before. The man will be sleeping, the CD is playing. He wakes up with the salmon, he sleeps with the salmon. Suddenly, the spirit of excellence possessed him. Possessed him. His success made news in UK. His pastor stood at our altar in solution to testify. This message, you need to wake up in the morning hearing. God will act. It is ripe. Super highway. I will help you. When you sleep at night, rather than flying with demons, you put it small by the side. When you are snoring, a father is saying, you are a super highway. Therefore, you are a liar. Then he does like this. The words between now and December, Kiwiji. I told you I am not joking. I say I am not joking. From the day God told me the devil is behind time, I dedicated the next three months, October, November, to this and December. I said this time it shall be by fire, by force. The kingdom of God so fire it violent and the violent take it by force. Between now and December, your life cannot remain the same. I tell you, you by the time November we take Holy Communion, <laughs> you become a wonder. By December, position for blessing. Minerals will come knocking in your on your life. Let God be a liar if you remain like this in 2014. But he can never be a liar. Give it out to our father. Give it out. Give him a, a clap of pressure. Amen. Now, I don't know whether the CD, some of them are ready. I'm told some are already ready. Those of your friends who could not make it, if you love them, make sure you pass by solution, buy CD or DVD. Or both. Play, give them as a gift if you love them. Those of them that couldn't come, call them tonight. Tell them, I've stood in the gap for you. Because you missed the best in the year. Tell them that. And make sure they get a copy. And prepare for November Holy Communion. Your family, not a hoof shall be left for the devil. I said, not a hoof. Moses told Pharaoh, not a hoof, not even an animal, can I surrender to you? So November 1, after we talk to Pharaoh, 
we will tell him what Moses told him. I will see your face no more. So get ready for Friday, for November. Now, you may wonder, Daddy has not made altar call. I am not in that mood. Now, those of you who are not born again, I'm sure you have cried out your heart to God this evening. If you are not saved, and you want to give your life to Christ, not for counseling, to give your life to Christ, I will spare my time in that room. After we share grace now, you come and meet me in that room. And I will lead you to Christ. I will wait for you. I will wait for you. Lift up your hands unto the heavens. And thank God for our father. Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you for a gift to our nation. And a gift to our generation. God, you will keep him alive. You will keep his family alive. You, every prophecy he has prophesied over our life as a father. This is your year to act for him. This is the ripe year to honor him. This is the time to give him the long-awaited victory. We are glad that you directed us to him. We are glad that he accepted to come. We pray that his life will continue to be relevant. And that God, you will grace him even in old age. Thank you for the next time he's coming here. He's coming to harvest testimonies out of today's meeting. Blessed be your name forever. As we go, we are going loaded. The Bible says when the clouds are loaded fully, they shall pour rain. God, we are loaded. We are fully loaded. Our lives are loaded. We are going out to cause a shower of blessings. Thank you. We become invisible to the kingdom of darkness forever and ever. Thank you for the choir. Thank you for the technical people. Thank you for the guest ministers in music. Thank you for the ushers. Thank you for intercessors that prayed. Thank you for counselors and everyone. Together, God, our heavens will pour rain. To you alone be glory. As we go to worship you tomorrow in our services, let the fire continue with us. Blessed be your name. We shall not lose anybody this month. We shall not bury anybody this month. We came here in peace. We shall regather in November. In Jesus' name we pray. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. And to your neighbor, surely. Mm-hmm.